This is Galiter and welcome to a new episode of How to Draw Dragons. Today we're going to learn how to paint iridescent scales. For this example I grabbed some different things to show you. For example, the first one is the, the definition of iridescent. So it's an adjective and it says it shows luminous colors that seem to change when seen from different angles. So pretty much you can see something, but depending on where you look at it, it will show ver various different colors. Like bubbles, or feathers, or even scales, like in snakes. It occurs when the physical structure causes light waves to combine with one another, so that's interference. So that means that light waves clash against each other, and then that means, you know, that the color will be reflected differently. Sometimes green, red, purple, blue, so it depends on how you look at it. So now we're moving on to more examples. So here I've got some references. As you can see, I have different stuff. It's not only scales, it's also a beetle. In this case, the carapace of the beetle has diff different colors depending on how you look at it. And it's very similar to this one and this one, in that they are scales and they're harder in texture. But for example, it can be silky or watery, like in a bubble. Or even this, which is a fabric that simulates ser like a serpent's body. In this new one, I show you that it, it doesn't only have to be insects or bubbles or scales. It can also come in different forms like feathers and depending on the texture of the object even for example like feathers are softer and this scar is very sleek and you can see the difference right like here you can see very bright light reflecting on it and here even though the light reflects on it it doesn't look so like hard etched and here we have some of the different kinds of um, of scales you can find on snakes. I didn't go with the one of fish because fish also have very different kinds of scales. But you can research and use reference to find how many different kinds of scales there are and you can choose the one you like. I have a full video on how to draw scales that if you want to check that out that can help you with the basics. But for this one we're just going to color some of these in uh, luminescent or interference kind of style. So here we have some other examples of a beautiful snake and what we're going to do is grab these examples and try to paint our own. So for this one I'm gonna use it as a reference and I'm gonna hold it in front of this one so we can see what we're doing while we're painting. Okay, so here we have part of what I've been doing. What I did is I filled a layer with color. And after that, I started replicating the scale texture. And for that, what I did is uh, observe what is what's happening with the skin of this particular reference. Not all of the iridescent scales would look the same. And the important thing is to observe while you learn. Because if you just copy things, you won't really understand why you're doing things. And it's very important to know why you're doing things in order to learn. So for example, what I did here was first start with the base color, which I chose the dark blue, as we can see here. And the brush doesn't really matter, it's the one you have to be comfortable with. And I suggest you lower the opacity of your brush so when you paint, you can add more layers of color. So I started first with the darkest area, because in this reference, that's how it looks like. And we were learning. So we don't, when you do your own dragon with your own iridescent scales, you can take this and manipulate it as you wish. So first we see that some of these scales look very opaque, but they're also colorful the further you are away from them, or the further they are from the light. So in this case, for example, most of these ones look blue. Then some of them start looking a bit greener. 
and they have a dark outline but they don't look specially colorful but once you get to the center and the light hits it you start seeing red orange yellow purple pink and more green and that's a very beautiful combination it looks like a rainbow so as you can see this particular snake has um, more dark colors and some white scales that do not reflect iridescence and that's why it looks like opaque in this part it looks like a beetle so to replicate it I am color swatching I'm trying to replicate what I see, so for example, if I see this has a darker blue, I go and add the darker blue here. And then a bit of green, so the green goes a bit underneath. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, because if the snake turns around, the colors will change again. But then, as you see, for example, this one has darker hues of blue in the middle, and then this little white part, it's the opaque part. But then something funny happens. You see the outline of these scales has a brighter hue. So I choose a smaller brush to be able to make the little details. On the edges of some of the scales, like here and here, you can see how the limit is more bright. And then on this one, for example, you don't see a lot of bright um, contrast but darker colors instead so you can go and just like darken it. It's a very good exercise this one to replicate textures because you get to understand how they work and then be able to paint them in your own paintings. So this is more like a hot potch of, of what scales would look like if you went and did every single scale individually, which is not a very fast way of working if you're into fast working. If you want it to be faster, then I would recommend to stick into simpler methods. So for example, I stick with this part, and what I would do is just grab a brighter hue, lower the opacity of my brush, and pretty much just go in and do a like a simpler kind of coloring. Choose one of the brighter ones in the center. And then some little adds of color in other places. Not to be too specific. You can make your brush smaller. And where the light hits it, which in this case would be the middle, you can have some more fun with the colors. Not all of them have red, for example, not all of them have yellow. Most of them still have blue. Some of them have purple. I think it looks beautiful. Like, it's one of my favorite textures to paint. So you get it, like this. It's simpler, it's faster might look different, of course, than our other method. So this is one method and this is another. So you see it's very different. And my method is not the only one. Of course, there are so many ways you can paint this, right? So please don't stick to mine only. So in this case, for example, we want to make it like the brighter edges, so you can choose edges that you want and make them look brighter. Then if you want like some darker places, you can shade in between. And it starts to look like iridescent and it's faster. Also note that there is no white highlights anywhere. So the brightest spots are just like one straight color. And it usually happens in the edge. Like the yellow one, the green part. In this specific example, this is how I would do it. Now we're going to try a different one. Okay, so now we have a different kind of scales. So these ones are more like a like a spear, like a rhomboid shape. The example I chose is not the same, 
but we can replicate the style. So what I did here is first start with the darkest color, which probably was obviously not black, but I went with the darkest one for the edges or the base. And then I proceeded to grab a pink one and then started like painting in the middle. As you can see, some of them are pink, some of them are yellow, just like here, with a little bit of orange in the center. And then that yellow starts becoming kind of green, or blue, like aqua color. And then the blue one becomes darker blue, my favorite color, the royal blue. And then it finally goes into a very, very beautiful deep blue, with the tips being orange. So it's very fun to see how many colors you can play around with. Like in the same scale you can have orange, magenta, and maybe some yellow or blue. Like in this one you have blue and orange, and the same one. So the point is to observe. My drawing can look a little bit flat because it doesn't have texture. So what I would recommend is either going to a different layer and adding some texture with a brush. So in this case, maybe this brush. I don't know. We, we can see that this texture here has some rugged kind of look. So it's not perfectly smooth. You can replicate it by trying to paint on top with this kind of um, texture brushes. I will try to see if some layer properties can change it, so I might have to choose a different layer. For example, I choose multiply and lower the opacity a bit and start choosing different colors. So in this case, for example, I want blue one. You can see how it looks a little different with more colors on it. And the fun part about using textures is that it changes the feel of what you're drawing. If you don't want to go individual scale by scale, you can always grab a like bigger size brush and just like go on top of it. Now you see it's a different feel, it's a different texture than without. So now the fun part about trying different kinds of scales is that you can try different methods to make it look unique. For example, in this one, choose a different color, maybe this one. And what we can do from that is try a different method. So in this case, instead of going with each individual scale, we're going to try to darken the edges with our texture brush. Then grabbing the lighter parts along some of the biggest scales we can see here. And then just do the color change on the biggest scales. So we can do like a darker pink here. Maybe the darker orange. We can even add some blue, like that's not a it's not prohibited. Orange and blue is like the best combination. We can even try some green from our previous one. Because these scales are closer together, like this, it would be different. The luminescence would be crowded, which just means that it won't be able to show so well that it is changing color. Because it's crowded, it's rugged, it's different texture, it wouldn't show as clearly as it does in the other examples. So even if you try to make it look like like this and then green, it would just look strange because it's too crowded. So to make it look even better, I make this the biggest ones, the ones that change color, and the smallest ones just stay in a very one tone kind of look to make it more appeal. So this is perfect if you want to create your own dragon with different kind of texture scales, you can try different methods and be aware of what happens when the light hits the surface, because that's what texture is, it's pretty much what happens when the light hits it. 
what what does it um, you know separate is it bouncing the light is it reflecting it completely is it absorbing it the funny thing about these little scales is that you can choose a smaller brush and go with little highlights in some of them it will be really time consuming if you're like trying to go for the every little one so don't 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 go overboard with this because then that takes a lot of time I mean if you want to take a lot of time then that's fine but if you have a deadline for example or you're a concept artist like me you need to do things fast so yeah that's a different example it looks like a bubble like those scales look like bubbles now this one is very similar so we're not going to to do this one this one is like this one except that it has bigger bigger ones we're gonna try this one and this one so for our last part of the video I'm going to show you the last two scale types I'm going to make so I did the cycloid one and the juxtaposed one but you can see the difference in my reference and the actual drawing I was doing is that these scales are very close together and these ones are a little further apart but the theory works the same way so what I did with the pink one in this case was to observe the not only the colors obviously but what happens here is very different than what happened with the other references so let me see if I can find the other ones so in this case oops <laughs> I grabbed the wrong one wait okay this one here yeah so you see how different they they are from one another and it might be kind of obvious but you see that this one is harder, this one is, I think, synthetic material, so it's plastic probably, and it's softer. It doesn't have the same hard texture in this one. And this one, for example, looks like metal, although it's not. So what I was trying to do with this one is replicate the soft look. You can grab a soft brush or anything probably this big to try to make it softer, or you can always just paint and then add texture later you can see plastic is way softer it does have some texture though what I looked at this what I realized was that it has white pure white because of the light of course but it's a very shiny material in this case we don't have pure white except maybe these parts but these ones are the opaque scale so you don't see this bright white light in this one it reflects almost entirely on the edges of some of the scales that are closest to the light source and then it starts diminishing just little beats of white and the rest it doesn't go all the way anymore and the other thing that it's interesting is that the rest of these edges are blue instead of white because they're not so close to direct light and for example the darkest part it's not even black, it's like a darker pink. And it happens mostly in the edges of the scales that are further away from the light. And that gives them more, more of a 3D feel. And then we can see that it has orange as well, so it's not entirely blue. It was really fun to do this one, I love the soft colors. So as you can see, the brightest one can be pink or blue, perhaps. And it just works like that on every single one of the scales. So it's very fun to make this one. Most dragons could have this kind of scales. I mean, if you want to make them like that. There's obviously so many fish and reptiles you can grab reference from that it would be impossible to finish them all. Well, the last of the examples I'm going to show you is this one. So, you see the reference is all together. And this one is a bit separate, but the interesting part about this kind of uh, luminescence or ir iridescence Sorry if I say luminescence, I get confused <laughs> Iridescence is that this one has greenish kind of tones But when it's closer to the blue ones It starts shining a bit of the color of the one that is right on top or close to it So for example, this is greenish and this one is reddish. So the red one reflects the greenish kind of color, or yellow, on the top. 
And the blue one, which is beautiful blue, starts shining off a little bit purple on the top because of the purple one that's next to it. So what happens is that the colors of a reflective material just as this reflect on each other in difference from some of the others one for example this one when we made this one here we did not have such a like a reflective thing theme going on so you can see how these scales don't really reflect the color of one another they just are in this case, this one does reflect a little bit, because if you have a blue one, you can see the blue one next to it. This one also reflects a little bit, as you can see the blue reflected on the pink. This one is the most reflective of all. So when you're drawing this kind of thing, you have to keep in mind the texture of what you're going to do. So there's different kinds of scales for different kinds of creatures, but for example, if this was wet, it will probably have some white lights as reflection. Every material is different and reacts differently to light. Just as I showed you with the car. So when I made, for example, the beetle or the bubble, see how it reflects the trees? This wouldn't reflect the tree. This probably would. This wouldn't. These wouldn't. So it's really important to see what you're referencing and observe and realize why things look the way they do because then you can make believable textures so for example I don't know where I put the car nope I think it's it's lost forever in the abyss that is Photoshop I think it's here yeah with everything else <laughs> okay so we don't have the car, but we have different kinds of scales. And in this one, you see how it is not luminescent, or sorry, not iridescent, because it doesn't shine all the colors that we saw before. This is opaque. And in this one, it is shining, and it's showing bright white, because that means the light is reflecting on it. This is opaque, but it is iridescent, and different from this one. So that's the best way to practice, is grabbing reference of any kind. I'll put the credit for this image on the uh, description. And then you can try to practice grabbing every texture you can find that you like. It doesn't even have to be reticent, it could be any kind. And then just paint and learn from it. It doesn't take a long time, as you can see, it's not very difficult to do it. And the more you do it, the better you will be with your scales. So that was all for now, guys. Sorry for taking so long and making another video. I've been doing my webcomic and I have a lot going on. But more videos will come. If you have any suggestion, please feel free to share in the comments below. Click subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can keep updated on what I post. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.